Hello, and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, we're going to aim to train some of the Kerbals. Now, just a reminder, we do have a Duna transfer window in a few days, so we want to get these Kerbals trained pretty quickly so that I can send some stuff over to Duna. And I've already got that stuff built, of course, but I wanted to get this done. Well, at least we want to get some of the Kerbals trained somewhat so that we can do one of the other things that I want to do before launching the Duna missions. And so here's a training mission, and basically the core of this mission is in here, and that's the reason why the rocket looks the way it does. We've got these little Kerbal mobility units. I've been meaning to use these for a while now. I designed them a while ago. We'll take a closer look at these in the SPH in a minute. But basically, the Kerbals are going to be returning in this little pod here, and we've got a heat shield under here. So there's a heat shield there. So it's just this that's got to be returning back home. This is a service module that will uh, boost them back from lunar orbit back to Kerbin. And so it's just got the Delta V for that. And you can see the docking port because this other portion I intend to reuse. Okay, so that's why it's possible to dock up with it there. And uh, of course you want to reuse it because these are docked in here. And so we can refuel these and continue to use them in lunar orbit. So that's the idea. In fact, uh, another one of these little vehicles could redock with this, uh, refuel these, and then uh, these could go out again. So that's that's the concept here. Now, the bottom portion here is a main sail stage, and I've got parachutes on so that stage recovery could potentially get it back for us. Not entirely sure that'll work or not, but you can see we have a procedural decoupler in the middle there, uh, there. And so, yep, that is going to separate, and we've got struts just in case. And then these I rarely ever use, but this seemed like a good time. So, because we don't have a engine that really fits this sort of form factor. So, yep, I've put in, uh, those little uh, radio mounted engines like that, tucked them in a little bit. And so what's going to happen is the mainsail is going to get us up uh, part of the way to orbit. Then these four engines are going to get us the rest of the way and then transfer us to the moon. Now, uh, let's go to the SPH and take a look at these Kerbal Mobility Units. Okay, so here we have the Kerbal Mobility Unit Mark II. And it's Mark II because the Mark I doesn't have a docking port on its tail. Instead, it actually had one of the ant engines, well, LV-1 engines, instead of these radio ones. Um, and so it had a full-size LV-1 on the tail, and that provided 4 kN of thrust. This version with the docking port on its tail has LV-1R skill to 70%, because of course we don't need 8 kN of thrust, that will be double what we really need. And so I scaled it down. A lot of parts have been scaled down, for instance, uh, these uh, micro landing struts have actually been scaled down. You, you wouldn't have expected that, but uh, yes, 70% on them to save mass. And so it looks like this. This is how the, the vehicle lands. And it lands using RCS thrusters. So we have the RCS blocks. Actually, probably, well, no, I can't scale them down. I mean, it looks a little bit weird, and uh, I would want to scale them down, but uh, we need the full thrust of them in order to land on the moon. Uh, you'll see uh, the lunar uh, thrust weight ratio, and this is only calculating based on the LV-1Rs, scale to 70%, is 2.58. Now, uh, those provide probably about uh, 5 kN of thrust, I think it was. No, 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 it's less than that. It's probably around 3-ish, uh, based on 70% uh, scaling. I think it's a factor of 2.4 less than normal. Uh, so if it's 8, then about 3, let's say. So 3 kN of thrust. Uh, the RCS thrusters, uh, these guys blowing their uh, mop propellant this away, uh, will generate 2 kN of thrust, which will be enough to land on the moon and then lift off again. So that's what this uh, mop propellant is for. It's actually to touch down and lift off. And then we can use these thrusters to get to orbit. You can see 1,600 meters per second, more than enough to land on the moon and take off again. Um, well, I mean, close. Rendezvousing with the vehicle will depend on the mop balance and we'll hope that that's enough. Uh, this is a herp maintenance pod and that comes with the 
with the colonization system. So Umbra Space Industries Hurt Maintenance Pod, you can see 0.16 tons crude capacity 1. Now I hope that, uh, I don't know if the Kerbal has a uh, separate mass when occupying that, in which case we have a lot less delta V and that could cause a problem. I don't know if, uh, can we, I wanna, add, uh, let, let, let's simulate that, that's about the same size, so it'll be 1360, that's a lot tighter. Hmm, we'll have to see, I'm not sure. Um, there's every possibility that trying out this new system might cause a Kerbal Fatality on this training mission, but, uh, well, I guess training missions do sometimes tend to be dangerous, I guess. Okay, but anyway, that's the KMU Mark II for you. It's a neat little thing, 0.8 tons, can fit plenty in most cargo bays. Yep, that's the idea. Alright, let's go back to the... Well, uh, I think we can launch. Uh, the one... Well, uh, any other points I have to make about the training mission I'll make during the launch. Uh-oh, I nearly forgot something. I brought them all the way out here, but we don't really have enough life support, I don't think. Let me just, just check, but it doesn't look like it from the resources up there. Oh, it hasn't launched yet, so it's not telling me in here. But I'm pretty confident that uh, six units of food... The, 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 these don't look like good numbers, so let me bring it back to the VAB and add some more resources for them. Okay, well, I've added a life support tank there, and that gives us plenty of time. It's, uh, it's got uh, 27 days with the current crew. I would like less. I could dump some, but I guess there's no huge point to it. If we uh, dump all of it, what do we get? Maybe 20 Delta V or so? Uh, yeah, so it's not a huge impact on our Delta V situation, even on this stage. I've got this stage locked right now, that's why it's not showing up. But even there, uh, well, I guess we could check that out. 708 right now, that's plenty to get back to Kerbin. And uh, how much impact did this have on it? Yeah, hardly anything. So, no, no worries, really. Okay, but thinking about this, now the crew I wanted to send up was uh, not not these guys because some of them have already gone to the moon. I wanted to try having one that had already gone to the moon, but I wanted a pilot, so I wanted Dunzer, and I wanted Richlock as a scientist. So newbies. But thinking about it, I don't think we've done launch pad science yet. Uh, we haven't done the science on the launch pad or around the KSC. So maybe. Let, let me let me get them to do that first, maybe, and see what happens. Just so that they're not starting out completely fresh. So, yeah, um, it won't be... I'm not going to save this, of course, but we're going to let them uh, hop out on the launch pad and do some science and see what happens. I'm sure we'll get some points like that. Okay, so I don't want to belabor this, because there's, there's probably a lot of science that we haven't done just around Kerbin, because I tend to rush that part. But I don't want to have them hang around Kerbin in order to do all their training. But let's say we have a Dunzer EVA and uh, EVA report. Yeah, we haven't even done EVA report from the launch pad, just to give you an idea. Okay, and uh, take the surface sample from here. Uh, no, let's, let's have somebody else do that. Okay, so EVA report board. Let's have a uh, Richlock EVA. Take surface sample, keep data. Now I doubt the Kerbal we already have somewhat experienced, uh, Samden, will get anything from any of this. Um, let's hop back to uh, Dunzer and have Dunzer plant a flag somewhere. Or uh, let's have him get some... Whoa, watch out. Some sample from the grounds over here, maybe. Okay, from KSC, keep data. All right, well, that's fine. Let's go with that and see what we can get out of that. Probably just a point of XP, but that's a better start than they were gonna have. Okay, board, board, and recover. 
Okay, well, we got 20 science out of that somehow. That's amazing. Probably a little bit overdoing it. I, I'm sure they fixed it in uh, 1.0. Rich Lock and Dunster gain one experience point. Okay. Alright, so anyway, let's get on with the mission. Okay, here we are with Sam Dunn, Dunzer, and Richlock, and I've made one addition to the rocket uh, before bringing it out, and that's some solar panels. I had solar panels on before, but I had changed the stages up and forgot to put them on again, so I put them on again. And now I have SAS on, throttle up. Uh, note that the ablator shielding is not full on the heat shield for the main pod, the return pod, so that's a uh, key point. But I think that'll be fine. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Now I'm deciding to launch at night because again we have a limited amount of time before the Duna transfer time, and potentially I want to send these guys over to Minmus as well to do some training there. So uh, yeah, that's the basic idea. We could refuel at the moon using KS or uh, attaching something to a docking port, you know, removing the pod, docking up and then refueling and sending it over to Minmus. There are a lot of possibilities, but I think maybe we'll bring them back and then relaunch. We could have sent more Kerbals. That's a thing I considered. I considered using the Mark II crew cabin. Uh, actually, let's roll the other way. I'll have Smart ASS do it. Yeah, I considered having the Mark II crew cabin as a possibility, but um, in the end, I wanted to try out the... Because the Mark II crew, crew cabin would have necessitated using Mark II parts, and uh, I wouldn't be able to fit the what you call it, Kerbal Mobility units in that. So I decided to go this way instead. Or at least I would have had a tougher time fitting the mobility units. And it'd be more airplane-y. Now we could have launched them on a space plane, but that would have been a different thing. By the way, being able to use the capsule as an escape just in case the rest of this didn't work properly was a consideration. That is a thing that uh, was part of the plan. Also, I put the parachutes on the bottom here because uh, in theory I wanted to land on this side rather than on the mainsail. We will see whether stage recovery actually recovers this. I have no idea whether that will work or not. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it here until the stage runs out. This staging looks a little bit dubious right now, but that whole situation is a little bit complicated anyway. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, we continue. I think it's possible, I mean the problem is refueling the little KMUs, but it's possible to transfer directly to Minmus, I think, with this. We'll have to see. Maybe a little bit more fuel would have been necessary. Now the KMUs don't have that much food on them. Hmm. Uh, do they have any food on them? I hope they have at least a snack or something. Yeah, they have a snack. They've got food, water, and oxygen. Very little, though. So the Kerbals are going to have to head down and head back up pretty quickly. I've double-checked that this one is locked. And I believe the tanks on the KMU... Oh, there's 120. I believe the tanks on the KMUs are locked as well. Oh, no, but it's not uh, taking fuel from them. But I should lock them anyway. I perhaps should have put a docking port on this side as well and just had it dock with the other stage. It's a thought. Oh, uh, we've got a message. Um, recovered. Okay, so it was recovered, the main sail stage. Very good. Six shoots were enough. Barely. Uh, 7.48. Hmm. We could bring that down a little bit. We could put eight shoots. That's not a problem. 
Yeah, we only got 94% because of the speed, so we can get 100% if we just slap two more shoots on. Okay, but that's good news. So this will be a fairly cheap training mission. Uh, this portion is going to be reusable, and uh, we can get the slow panels out. It's got a controller inside the cargo bay, by the way. So it, it can be controlled, it's got a re uh, that there, and reaction wheels, and the solar panels, so, yep, it's all good. Let's get to orbit. Okay, that will do fine, 121 by 106, and we've got 1447 meters per second left. Maybe that's enough to go to the moon, get into orbit around the moon, uh, transfer to Minmus and get into orbit around Minmus. It's tough to say. Um, I think it's just a little bit less than what we need. It's a little bit frustrating, that. But anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, so I'll plot for the moon now. Okay, 827 meters per second and uh, moon periapsis of 21 kilometers. I'm not doing a free return because uh, frankly, that, that we want to be in an inclined orbit anyway, and also that will take a little bit more juice, and that would mean that we are even less likely to be able to transfer to Minmus afterwards. So, yep. You know what, I think it would be better to bring them back instead of trying to transfer to Minmus with this. Yeah. So that they get their points and we see how much it's worth. Ah, uh, that was actually too far. Uh, maybe... Backing off of RCS here. Hmm... Okay. Let me check that. That was taken from the RCS tanks I want it to be taken from. Probably not. Uh, it was taken from these. Okay. I'm going to transfer some RCS from the pod up here, which doesn't strictly need as much, into the stuff in here. So this is going to be a little bit finicky. Oh, uh, I can select more than one, can't I? Okay, hopefully that's topped off everything. Yes, everything's topped off. Alright. Okay, well we're on our way. And there is one other consideration in that I don't think we have done all of the EVA stuff. Uh, if we do it now, I don't know if it gives them any benefit, but let me uh, have Dunzer pop out. We haven't actually done all the EVAs around Kerbin, though we have done that one. I think we haven't actually done Grasslands, believe it or not. Let's time up a little bit. And I'm not sure if we've done high over Kerbin either. Let's try now. Uh, Rich Lock, how about you? Nope, still Highlands. I know, I could probably have uh, MechJeb dialogue to tell me when I'm in a good situation. Finally, grasslands. Keep data. Okay, well, I'll uh, take that for done. So let's see if Witchlock can get high over Kerbin if we haven't done that already. No communication devices on this, of course. Training mission, we want them all back. Yep, we haven't done high over Kerbin. Keep data. Board. How about a crew report? Yep, we haven't done that one. Keep data. And how about send an EVA and take the reports so that we can do other ones. Take data. Okay, board. Alright, on to the moon. Okay, I want an inclined orbit around the moon. We're only, we've only got 1.6 degrees right now, but that won't cover much ground, and we want them all to land in different biomes. By the way, the only biome that we've landed in is the east far side crater. That's where our base is. So any other biome will do. And so I want to just change my inclination to maximize the chances of hitting something new. Not going polar or anything, of course. Just uh, 
minor deviation. Okay, it seems to have overdone it. All right, uh, 21 degrees is fine. Let's just hold retrograde, actually. Okay, 50 by 26 will be our orbit here. And that's, we, they'll have to rendezvous back with this, of course. They don't, I mean, uh, if, if they're short of fuel, maybe having them dock inside the bay might be pushing it. But um, that would be ideal if they can. They just need to get alongside and then transfer to the pods, strictly speaking. If we don't want to recover these MMU, uh, KMUs, not MMUs. Okay. Alright, uh, who shall we have go first? Possibly... Well, Dunzer's the pilot. Let's have him go first. Remember, this is controlled by the probe core. It's fine. It's still perfectly controllable without the pilot here. Okay, so... Off you go. Wish they got more points for EVAing. Sure, hard for me. I have no idea whether this KMU will work as intended or not. Landing on RCS is not a thing I commonly do, especially not on the moon. Oop, it, uh, can he board? Uh, store, release, scrap part? No, no, I, I want to... Why can't I board it? Hmm. This is weird. This might put a crimp in my plans. Can you not board this thing? I thought that was the whole point of it. It's a... It's a pod. It has a crew. It has a... Possibility of a crew. I don't get it. Is there a, like a hatch or something? Oh, uh, maybe grab? Hold on, there was a grab. Okay, grab. Oh, okay, it's like that. Alright. Now he's on. Okay, now the first question is... Uh, the mass issue, right? Uh, whether his mass gets added to it and whether that's going to cause problems for our delta V calculations. Okay, well, let's find out. The couple node. Off he goes. Let's unlock this tank. Oops, I'm on the wrong vehicle. Right. 1600. So, yeah, uh, his mass does not count. That is good. Off he goes. Dunzer Kerman. Look at this crazy thing. Okay, that's prograde. We want to flip around. It's got a nice reaction wheel on. The AES Mini SAS. There you go. We do want to rotate to make sure we keep that solar panel lit. I haven't decided on a landing location. Maybe that's the thing I need to do. Uh, let's ignite the engines though. I mean, we could do just Midlands and something like that. Could try this little trench here. It's a little bit dark, but we've got uh, ambient light adjustment and everything. Okay, uh, let's burn for descent. How much time do we have? We don't have that much. Got uh, 16, uh, well, 17 hours, 18 hours really. But, uh, yep, okay. Okay, curb in there. We have departed the main vessel. And we are attempting to land on the moon with this crazy little thing. We've got lights, but we don't really need them right now. It's probably best not to use them. Uh-oh. Hmm. You know what, maybe I should restart the program before continuing with this, because I'm hitting the RAM limit pretty closely and I don't want it to crash. So, yeah, let me restart now. 
Okay, I am back and we are once again going tail first into the ground, into the surface of the moon, as planned. Until the very last moment where we will use RCS to level out. We've got a pretty significant drain on the battery. This is not good. Oh, the lights are still on. I don't want the lights on. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, well, let's bring the orbit in. Oh, gotta get that popped out. Alright, now. Now, uh, this indicator does not include the life support requirements, so that's part of our problem here. That still says 22 minutes left of electricity. And from prior experience, they mean that we need the electricity to keep the Kerbal alive. Got a suicide burn count down there. And that's not very long. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, let's start out then. Okay, looks nominal. Suicide burn count down is still going down. But I think we have enough time here. Seems like it's expecting more thrust than we've actually got. We could use the RCS to help us out here, if necessary. But I could just tilt up right now. I don't know. Um... I don't really see the feature I was aiming for. I want to avoid that thing. I guess we'll just land here, wherever this is. Okay, Dunzer looks like he's having the time of his life. Okay, I'm gonna have to go and try out the RCS system. Let's see, which way is down? Ah, uh, the other way. Okay. Ah, uh, no, the other way. Uh, okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Mm hmm. Okay, this looks to be working nominally. Uh, except our horizontal speed is a little bit much. Um, okay, we've gotten rid of vertical speed. We've got a horizontal speed here. Uh, hold on. Okay, there we go. Okay. Well, that's a little bit better. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, we're on the ground. We use less than half of our mod propellant. Okay, that's acceptable, I think. Alright, we're on the ground. This is amazing. Uh, for those who don't know, I don't test this stuff out ahead of time. This is the, my first time trying to fly this thing at all. And boy, was it tricky. Okay, um, all right, Dunzer, uh, EVA, right. It's like that. It's not like the seat. The seat is different. This is like a proper pod. Okay, so EVA report. Keep the data. Take the surface sample. Wow, that's worth a lot. Keep the data. We're in the Midlands. And plant a flag. Dunzer at the Midlands. Oh, not Modlands, Midlands. Hmm, that'll be the date. And. Consider me trained. Okay. Grab, board, cannot be stored on this, what? Experiments you have collected cannot be stored on this hurt maintenance pod? Ah, uh, that was unexpected. Now he's going to get the XP anyway, I think, but, but no science. Okay, we better get into orbit before we lose electric charge. Okay, um, we're facing the wrong way. We'll fix that uh, on the way up, I think. Uh, uh, not that ways. 
Uh, this way's. Yay! Okay. Gear up. Well, so storing experiments is a problem. Otherwise, this is pretty good for getting Kerbals around the moon and probably Midmus. Not Duna, though. Duna's atmosphere would cause problems, I think. Maybe not. Maybe landing will be easier, and then this has 1,600 meters per second, so... But then again, Duna's uh, gravity is a little bit more than this. Okay, well, I see the closest approach distance... Okay, there we go. I was waiting until it started going up again. Let's get to a minimum there. Okay. Sort of like that. We'll wait till Apoapsis to circularize, of course. Or get a rendezvous. Okay, electric charge is definitely running out. The sun's right there, though. Not quite risen for us yet, but we're close. This way. Okay. Close approach is in 7 kilometers. Hmm. Okay, if we want to get into orbit, it's not going to be 7 kilometers. Well, we are out of electric charge. Not for long. There we go. Hopefully Dunzer wasn't too worried about that. Okay, let's uh, retro and do some sort of an inclination adjustment in order to catch up with our training mission. The main vehicle. The mothership, if you will. Well, that's as low as I intend to go, so. Alright, we'll keep it there for now and then we'll do another correction burn at the same spot. Well, certainly, uh, for use at a base, this is a pretty good system. Obviously not great for collecting science, but uh, getting Kerbals from, for instance, one base to another on the Moon Minmus or some similar body, this would be pretty good. Okay, well, uh, here we go. Now the question is whether I can dock it back in the bay. We certainly have enough fuel. fuel we are not fuel-strapped at all. Okay, well, I'll have to control from the docking port. And I think we'll use mob propellant for the rest of the way in. It's a little bit difficult to see where we're at compared to the training mission there. Let's see if I can see. Uh, are we coming at the wrong direction? Uh, from the side, it looks like. I don't think I've done this kind of maneuver in this series yet. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Nope, no, 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 no. I was all nice and lined up. Stop that, stop that. Oh. Magnetism. Alright. Okay, well Dunzer's back. Dunzer? Get back to the cockpit. Or the pod, if you will. You have done your thing. And tested out our new little system. Found its single fatal flaw. Well, the electric charge is annoying too, but the fact that we can't uh, keep science on it is a little bit more important. Okay, well, I guess, uh, next one up. Technically, we didn't need to have three, did we? I had three for show, but really we only need one, since I can only control one at a time, huh? <laughs> In retrospect, that would have been smarter. And we could have, have, had, have had half the bay instead of this huge one. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, anyway, uh, let's find a location for our next landing. Preferably on the daytime side, I think, would be best. 
We did Midlands. We have to... Let's hit this crater. We're going over this crater here. Yeah. Let's let's try and aim for this crater here right now. Okay, quickly. Uh, yeah. And that'll be a good place. Richlock, your turn. I don't know if uh, Sam then would get any benefit from landing on the moon and planting a flag. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if he's planted a flag before. He's definitely been on the moon. Well, this has turned into a real boots on the ground sort of situation. We we're really only trying to plant the flag to get them XP. I wanted the science. That's a lot of science that we could have gotten, but no. Looks like this system does not allow us to do that. Okay, grab. Board. This time the guy has Smart ASS hold nine, uh, the pitch exactly, so that's easier for me to deal with killing the velocity. Okay. So really, this is not a bad way to get people to the base and back to orbit from the base, if necessary. Certainly on Mimis would be really easy with this system. Now on pitch zero when the time comes. Looks good. It is a lot better than last time. Ah, smart ASS can help us with this. I'm sure MechJab could do even more, but we, we, we don't need all of that. Not really seeing. Oh, there's my shadow. Okay, bit of a plop. Alright, Smart ASS off, and alright Richlock, time to plant your flag. Seems like all we can do. I wonder if there's like a science container or something. What does this mean, release? I think that's probably dangerous, I don't want to do release. Yeah, okay, EVA. Oh, there's a hop. Okay, weird choice of direction. Okay, where are we? Let's uh, do the EV report to see. Northwest crater, right. Now I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'll take the sample and everything anyway, just in case. Who knows? We should have put an antenna on this thing, and try. And, well, it still wouldn't accept it, I guess. Okay. Rich law. At Northwest Crater. Oh, I misspelled rich. Mm. Nope. Not quite complete. It has to actually make it back home, but the sentiment is okay. <sighs> Alright, so now we can wait for our target to go around the planet. We don't want to have to go around the nighttime side. Let's just try for a more direct approach to it. Um, electric charge shouldn't be running out. Why would electric charge be running out? Blocked by Kerbin. Oh, we've got an eclipse. Hmm. Let's wait for the eclipse to pass. I think. Come on, there's a little bit of light coming. Okay, there we go. Now, um, well, one more orbit then. Okay, we're pointing in the right direction. Let's go. Up, 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 up. And that's good enough. Gear up.
is really heading for lunar orbit in style. Okay, that looks very good. Really, we just have to match speeds with target and that'll get us into orbit. Assuming that uh, the... yeah, well, we've burned a little bit high, but uh, that'll do. That's what I wanted to do anyway. Yep. Okay, come on, catch up, catch up, catch up. Oh, it's going right by. Quick RCS. Help us out. Okay, let's just RCS this. Uh, not quite lined up, but let's get closer. It'll be clearer once we get closer. Richlock does not seem quite as happy at this stage. Maybe he's just focused. Up, oh, magnetism and docking. All right. No, Richlock is still pretty serious. Let's get him back into the capsule. And board. Huh, well. That part done. And last is Samden, who's already done this before. I mean, he's been on the moon before, but I don't remember if he's planted a flag. I guess we'll give him that chance. Let's see, where should we go this time? Um, this crater seems like a good idea. That one seems more fully lit though. If we could just change our inclination a bit, we could probably hit that one. Mm, we've got a lot of engines active. Gotta make sure that these guys are all shut down. Otherwise we could have havoc. I hope whatever new staging system they have in the next version of KSP will let us do this from the staging menu. Okay, so let's tilt so that we can hit this crater. while it's still in daylight, I mean. We could wait for it to go around to the nighttime side and then our orbit would hit it pretty quickly, but it's not the best way of doing things. Okay, my inclination change has happened. Look, why didn't you grab, grab? Board. Okay, and that's actually down here. Why, if you got this camera over there. All right, unlock and undock. Okie dokie. Okay, let's make an initial descent path. This is a little bit early compared to the other times, but I'll be fine. Oh, I haven't ignited the engines yet. Well, because of the long distance between our initial descent burn and this target spot. I think this was the most efficient of all of the of all of the retro burns. Okay, well let's go from here with RCS. That was a quick turn by Smart ASS, gave Sam done whiplash. Oh uh, boy, I might have been a little bit too late on this. Let's see. OK, 
Okay, might be alright. Okay, well, all together I think I'm getting better at using this thing. Alright, so I'm done. Plan to flag time. Okay, Samden at East Crater. Make sure I spell that right. All right. Oop, not 03. <laughs> Long end of the year. Okay. I'll just give him the same training mission. Complete. Okay. Last time we needed to go higher in order to meet up with it, so maybe this time I'll start out a little bit sooner so we don't have to do that. Okay, smart ASS off. RCS on, SAS on, and let's go. Gear up. And power. Okay, this time I think uh, it ended up worse. <laughs> Not better. Made the wrong move there. But that's fine. We can deal with it. So we're actually boosting even higher than last time. And we're actually going to be on the way down seriously before hitting our target. And it's probably going to be a much larger difference in our velocities. Okay. There's the target. Our rendezvous is occurring at night time, which isn't ideal. Okay, target docking port set. Oh, we have the lights on. Why do we always have the lights on, darn it? Maybe Sandon is afraid of the dark or something. Okay, this is a very odd view. Okay. Maybe we can change that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, don't worry, Sandon. You're coming in just fine. Uh, don't smack into the solar panel, though. That magnetism. Okay. Very good. Okay, Samden, transfer up. Okay. All done. Let's get them back home. So, we want to undock this portion. This portion will remain controlled by that controller and ready for other business if necessary. Let's uh, orient it uh, a little bit better. Okay, got the fuel here. Right, let's undock. I'm just gonna bring them straight down and so we'll go 35 kilometers I think. Okay, here we go. A little bit early, but it'll be fine. Okay, heading back home, we've got a 28.9 degree inclination. Not entirely sure where I'm going to end up. Just trying to avoid mountains, really. Well, it looks like we're not going to be too far away from home. Which also includes mountains, of course. <laughs> uh, but we could probably make it uh, into the water around here, possibly. We can probably use the service module to slow down a bit. Let's do that right before atmosphere.
Let's say around here will be fine. Oh, uh, our periapsis is going down. Hold on. Okay, that's good. We slowed down a bit. We kept our periapsis about the same. Let's let go of the service module, making sure that we don't let go of the heat shield. There we go. We have, of course, passed over to KSC. Oh, some. Oh, uh, that's the service module. That's the service module. Okay, everything seems good. We didn't really touch the ablator shielding very much. We might as well. Rec well, I don't know. The vessel mass is a little bit. Well, let's. Let's deploy the chute and then see if we're at good speed and then we will dump the uh, the heat shield if it turns out we're not. Otherwise, if we can recover the heat shield, that'll be good too. Okay, passing through the clouds. I think we're definitely at a safe speed for the parachute. Let's deploy it. So I have to get the capsule and the parachute in the same shot. Oh well. Okay, full parachute deployment. Let's see if we need to dump the heat shield. No, that's pretty safe for a splashdown, I think. Suppose if we wanted to, we could dump on the propellant. Okay, there we go. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, so we got 30 science from the stuff around Kerbin and also recovery of a vessel from orbit around the moon. So, at least that. Not as much as I want, but here's the question. And actually, we got good value from the return of the pod. Um, Alright, well, uh, Dunzer advanced to level 1, Samden gained 1 XP, and Richlock advanced to level 1. I think we're going to have to send these guys over to Minmus as well. I don't know if I want to do it immediately. Maybe we should just launch the Duna missions next. I'll think about that. I don't want to do the same exact mission back to back. But this was a fun mission at least, I think. Uh, I think we did good here even if we didn't get the uh, levels that I wanted to. And, you know, uh, 6 XP is nothing to sneeze at. Alright, so with that I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.